Well, I guess this could be a little bit of a follow-up to, what should I title this? Maybe, yeah, Superheroes Are Dickbags, Bandwagon. That's what I'll call this. But DJ made a very good observation, and it's a bit longer on the, the YouTubes here. Okay, sudden thought. How many people doing this are leftists? How many of them have internalized the thought that all patriots are evil because they are for American values like hard work, truth, justice, and so on? And so they cannot conceive or write of someone who is generally heroic. I wonder this because if there's essentially a nihilistic Gnosticism behind this. There's no right and wrong, no good and evil. I deconstruct heroes and heroics so that by reading and believing you can become you can come closer to understanding this nature of reality or rather the true reality for this reality and its so-called good and so-called evil is an illusion and once you have the true knowledge you will have power. John C. Wright would be able to address this far better than I can though this is just off the cuff. But it's still an interesting question. It's like, I've seen more liberal-leaning people be able to write a story just fine, and then later on in life, some of them become so it, it wrapped up in promoting their own political viewpoints that their writing it, suffers for it. Uh, there are some that are managed to keep it mostly out of their writing in terms of, you know, this is a particular setting you made and these characters do things according to that setting. Like Lynn Fwelling's um, Night Runner series and her Tamir triad are example of this. Yeah, it has some overall m more progressive things in it, but the characters aren't hitching you over the head with modern politics. Not as much as most you know, woke fiction in media does nowadays. So it is possible for more liberal-minded people to actually promote and prioritize a story. Another good example of this is Aeon 14. You know, Cooper, Cooper's politics definitely do not match mine whatsoever, but Cooper prioritizes story, you know, in my opinion, uh, and does a pretty good job of it. Doesn't make a big whole fanfare of who's sleeping with who. It's just Cooper drives the story forward, and now that it's going to go on to another leg of its journey. Uh, I would say if you do enjoy, um, like a basically, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Like a space opera with a little bit more of a, of a tech bent. The initial series you know, with uh, them going off to terraform this other planet and a lot of shenanigans happens along the way. I'll link it below. I'm just saying I, I will link the series I just mentioned below so people can see, you know, it is possible for someone who is liberal to genuinely write a story where the story is prioritized and their politics you know, might be in the background a little bit, but they're not beating you over the head with it. But I think that's also uh, to segue into a little bit of like how Superman's been treated. They they really can't encapsulate a big blue Boy Scout who believes in true justice in the American way, because even in you know the freaking Hobo of Steel, they didn't have the American way added on in the the the. God, the Superman Returns thing, they took out American Way from that too, because Superman's thing used to be Truth, Justice, and the American Way. I think the last time it was really said even in the comics was during, like, I think a little bit of Straczynski stuff, you know, where they had Superman renounce his American citizenship. It's like, really? Bitch, please. Seriously, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think DJ hit on a nerve right there. It, it, there, it, a lot of modern writers will take a look at their own country and be like, "Well, fuck that shit, I'm out." I mean, and it gets really tiring. It's like, is everybody else tired of seeing you know everybody's country just dragged through the dirt in in media and fiction? It's like uh, it's no wonder we have a shortage of more utopic elements everywhere. I mean, hell, um, a dystopia can still have very hopeful elements like, you know, Fist of the North Star and everything. You can have people, please put likable people in dystopias for the love of God. Everybody is not an asshole. Even in dystopias, 
it makes the person's character shine even brighter if they were are a genuinely decent person, even in a shitty dystopia. Oy vey. <laughs> Oy vey. That, and I'm looking at some comments over on Mr. JDA's channel, um, where he's talking about what uh, what DC's doing by ditching con continuity and everything. This isn't what I meant by using your multiverse. Um, have have a main line, and then use your multiverse for testing out, seeing what kind of XYZ projects might catch on. And that's it. But these guys just want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. We we are guys. We're not gonna get young John Kent again. I don't think. Not unless DC burns itself to the ground and then people can take up the mantle and legitimately build aspirational heroes again. But one comment stuck with me here. The sun comes out for everyone and there's plenty of space in the shelves for a good comic. If they want to pander to the woke crowd, then just create an imprint with three to five monthly books and let them go nuts while you keep taking care of your legacy character brands. Of course they won't do it because these people aren't interested in developing actual honest editorial projects. They just want to make headlines and being good PR for corporations, actual money makers, movies, games, merchandise. It doesn't matter for the that for the stunt to work. It's necessary to bastardize their own icons and brand over and over and over again. The mainstream public doesn't care for the integrity of Batman comic series. They just want another Batman variant of Funko trash to put on their shelves. So the least faithful to the original, the better. Okay, and the thing is, when I see that, it's because with superheroes, the iconic, the aspirational, most of these corporate IPs, they'll stick their thumb up their butt, test the wind, and see where they think whatever trend is going. They just care about trends. They don't care about the integrity of whatever they have in their umbrella. Um, old old style stuff did. Um but nowadays, no, they, they just want to try to cash in on who is the l most likely to buy their stuff currently. And that's the reason why you will see people gravitate towards buying merchandise and things like that. It's why you still have people hanging on to Star Wars buying some of the merchandise when the actual medium itself or the IP itself is pretty much dead. There's no other way to say it. It's dead. Because even though some people still buy some merch, most of the time, the longer running fans, they're not looking for merch that's currently on the shelves. No, they're going to flea markets trying to find the old stuff from the heyday of Star Wars. That should tell you something, you know? And the same goes for superhero pros. The more and more people that jump on the deconstruction bandwagon, the less and less I care about pursuing some of these other series it's like the are there really that many people out there that can support that many dystopic piece of shit navel gazing superhero setups where this is homelander 2.0 that's homelander 2.3 that's homelander 3.0 there's homelander 4.0 it's like how many evil superman concepts are are there out there that can be supported by all these you know fans or whatever fan base it does have. Are there that many people around that can buy, honestly, that much nihilistic piece of crap fiction? And it, you got to wonder, on the flip side, you have people, you have readers like me that just check out automatically to that stuff. It's like, oh, you're offering me yet more in my wheelhouse that I don't, you know, at least peripherally, that I don't even care about. The, the matchup is about 10%. It's like, okay, the initial spark was like, okay, okay, you want to be superhero pros. But then it's like, oh, great, it's yet another wannabe Watchmen. I really wish Watchmen didn't exist because it has ruined so many things. So many things. Uh, yeah, because like I've said before, I want more catered to my sensibilities in the running than what's being catered to with you know with the boys and everything else um people like the show i've watched a couple of clips and i'm just like 
it's Hancock on steroids. And I didn't enjoy Hancock much. I remember looking at it, it's like, when am I going to get the aspirational back? It's sad to say, I have to keep looking at manga for that, for the most part. So, you know, superheroes and everything else, the aspirational has got to get back on point. Um, part of this mindset is also due to the fact that for a while, I was like a, a, a typical conservative in terms of, well, writing is a waste of time. Why should I do it when I have to, you know, you know pull myself up by my bootstraps and keep going? It For a while, that prevented me from even thinking about writing as even a side thing or something for enjoyment. But that's what we're going to need to do, everybody. Like, if you have a, a different mindset, but you want to see more of what you want within the whole entire buffet here, you, you can't just stop sit and think like, oh, you know, me writing this won't matter. It's like, no, escapism nowadays definitely matters because far too many money stuff is pretty much beating you over the head with uh, current year political messages. And just as an example, uh, that one um, John Ringo thing that was basically, you know, to the right stuff, run amok, uh, kill dare or whatever it was called. That's what it's like reading most woke leftist regressive fiction nowadays. It's like they're constantly beating you over the head. I would be just as fucking annoyed if right leaning shit was doing that all the time, all the fucking time. Because there's days where it's like, I just don't want to deal with anybody's politics. I just want to sit back and read and have fun, which is why I'm doing Uplift Protocol. Like, I reread certain stuff, like I make notes so that way, because the upcoming issue is going to basically course correct a little thing from book zero, where I made it seem like a, a, a future Eliza was talking to her parents, like, no, th that's going to be explained, because I decided that I wanted... T the time travel stuff or things of that nature to work a certain way and I decided to take a more um, kind of a little bit more linear approach to that there are certain magical objects that will help you view stuff through time like you can see the past you can even see bits of the future but you won't be able to interact with it directly or change the course of events it it's just like a big giant view screen which I've already alluded to with the, even the signs and po portraits thing. Um, yes, they were with their future Eliza there, and with the parents of the present, like as far as like mindset and where they were within a particular slot. But it's going to be explained in such a way that it, it's like, okay, certain things can be bent but not broken. Magic can help bend certain things. That's the reason why it, when they were within that particular realm it really wasn't like tied to any particular timeline. It was kind of like how I was ex describing with the throne where you can see multiple different timelines and different choices that people make and like what are the results of those choices but it can't directly change the flow of whatever current timeline you're in. I will try to clarify this you know, uh, with the upcoming Avalon issue because that's going to do a deep dive, deeper dive into that. So, you know, that'll be fun. Uh, but as, yeah, as far as the rest of the, the superhero stuff and the iconic, I think they do fundamentally have a problem with connecting with something like Superman just like I have a fundamental problem connecting with something like Batman or anti-heroes, it's just a foreign concept to me. So I imagine it's just as much of a foreign concept to a regressive leftist that anyone could genuinely be stalwart, brave, and true. So that's the reason why I'm missing that in most comics and everything else, because they don't have it in them to write that. Just like I don't have it in me to write you know, most navel-gazing piece of shit people. That's the reason why you'll see little updates with the villains and a few things, because it's more like the villains instigate things and then the heroes have to solve it. But I don't go into extreme depth with the villains. They're pretty much there to cause, tr like, trouble. 
uh, they're pretty much there to represent the vice versus the virtue of the heroes. So that's about it. Have a good day, everybody.